tricky weird change. <laughs> 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 uh, Want to hear Pike's Peak? I learned it today. Uh, or not at Pike's Peak, now. coming up the Oh, coming up the five. See if I play it like that. I just sung the song for him about Boomer Johnson, you know, 
Yeah. And it finally got the wife and mouth to get rid of him and said he went for his name matches or kerosene, so I guess it was pretty hot for those women. And of course, some people think when you kick off, you go where it's hot and some think you go up where you flap around and fly. It's nice and cool. And others think that you come back to something else. And that's reincarnation. I remember my fellow from Texas said if you was a mean in this life to come back in the next one as a kid's pony. The kid just rides the hell out of you all the time. It has to be halfway as nice as you possibly can. But anyway, this is there's an awful lot of cowboy poets. In fact, there's a lot more cowboy poetry than there is cowboy songs by a whole bunch. And in Elko, Nevada, back the last of January and the first two days of February, they had a poetry gathering, and they had about 200 cowboy poets there. And it was about the most fun of anything I ever went to. <laughs> and uh, we had a real strenuous good time while we were there in Elko, which is a good place to do that. <laughs> And uh, I finally got to meet Wally McRae, and I'd been telling his poem about reincarnation before I went. And I thought he was going to whip me, but he just shook hands and said, glad that somebody was telling him. But here, here's the cowboy version of reincarnation. This is real serious subject for a cowboy poem. No tears or anything like that. I try to choke him down and stay with him. <laughs> what is reincarnation? The cowboy asked his friend. Starts his old pal told him when your life comes to its end. They comb your hair, wash your neck, and clean your fingernails. Put you in a padded box away from life's travail. Now the box in you goes in a hole that's been dug in the ground. Reincarnation starts in when you're planted beneath that mound. Them clods melts down just like the box and you who is inside. And that's when you're beginning your transformation ride. And in a while the grass will grow upon your rendered mound until someday upon that spot a lonely flower is found. And then a hoss may wander by and graze upon that flower that once was you and has now become your vegetative bower. Now the flower that the hoss done eat along with his other feed makes bone and fat and muscle essential to the steed. But there's a part that he can't use, and so it passes through, and there it lies upon the ground, the thing that once was you. <laughs> and if perchance I should pass by and see this on the ground, I'll stop a while and I'll ponder this object that I've found. And I'll think about reincarnation and life and death and such. And I'll come away concluding, well, you ain't changed all that much.
but though it was awkward and I blushed the flame and red like the principal decoration on a turkey gobbler's head. And the lady said to sell them that they ever got a chance to see an old time puncher at a high tone dance. Well, I cut me out a heifer from that block of pretty girls and I yanked her to the center of the dance and dreamy she laid her head upon my bosom in a loving sort of way. We drifted into heaven as the band began to play. I could feel my neck a-burning from her nose and breathing heat as she dozy doed around me half the time upon my feet. And she gazed up in my blinkers with a soul dissolving glance. Quite conducive to the pleasure of a high tone dance. Well, every nerve just got to tingling to that music of delight. And I hugged that little safety and uncomfortably tight. But she never made a beller, and the glances of her eyes seemed to thank me for the pleasure of a genuine surprise. <laughs> oh, she cuddled up against me. I hugged her all the tighter for her trust of fine play. I tell you what, the joys of heaven ain't a cousin circumstance. To the hug of me, the pleasures of a high tone dance. When they struck that old cotillion on the music bill affair, every bit of devil in me seemed to fetch out on the tear. I let out a cowboy war whoop, I started in to rag. The rafter started shaking, then the floor began to sag. Then my partner, she got seasick, and she staggered for a seat. I balanced to the next one, but she dodged me slick and neat. I tell you what, I took the creases from their go to meet and pants. When I put the cowboy trimmings on that, Porto 
He says, oh, very well. I like everything except what you do. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've even been worse discouraged than that. <laughs> in fact, I quit singing the tall for years and years. So they started playing music in Mountain Dew about 20 years ago. And I lived in California before I moved to Arkansas. And one of my hangouts when I wasn't rodeoing some. One night at the Hitchin Post, a friend of mine had just had twins, and we went down there to celebrate. Or his wife had had the twins, actually, but he was doing the celebrate. So uh, he asked me to get up and sing something, and they had a guitar and a microphone there, and they never paid anybody, but if the spirit sees you, you to get up and sing. So I sang something real long. And I was singing real slow that night, as I remember. And I knew everybody in the place, and they didn't pay no attention to it, except four strangers sitting at the table. When I got done with this song, I uh, thankfully forgotten which one it was now, except that it was long and slow. These four strangers got up from their table and come over to me, and they said, if you don't sing better than that, we're going to kill you. <laughs> and that, that was really discouraging. <laughs> you know, I quit for a long, long time. <laughs> uh, anyway, my friend took that as an invitation to fight and crash them a little and throw them out, so I got hard all right. <laughs> I just got to thinking maybe I shouldn't sing at all. The Barnacle Bill. Now the one that you can do. The which? The Barnacle Bill. Not the... No, not the... <laughs> not the, the, other, the other The other one. The other one is a bad, bad song. A friend of mine years ago went crazy. I mean, plum crazy. And he, anywhere he arrived, he arrived singing. It was a restaurant or a bar or whatever. It was the worst version of it. <laughs> Couldn't, couldn't do that. He got crashed everywhere he went. <laughs> anyway, Barnacle Hill. This is my sailor song. <laughs> this real sad sailor comes back to see his sweetheart, you know, at the end of the sea. <laughs> I didn't think you would. You told me that the last I'm time. I'm always glad for an idea when I'm going blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I am on land again, said Barnacle, the sailor. I drank a thousand quarts of gin, said Barnacle, Bill, the sailor. I had me a gal in here before. I swore I'd never see no more. Here I am. Well, he's old and hurry up. 
ball bass, he took his long frame down. I'm getting tired of cowboy days, let's take the job to town. They started out at a right smart old, cause there weren't no sight of a ride. Them was the days when a good cow punch could I love his inside. At the old Kentucky bar, they stopped at the ends of old Whiskey Row. They wound up tight sometime that night, some 40 drinks below. The house turned around and set them up, and boys, I'm telling you right. Till the God forsaken truth, them boys got stew that night. Well, then they lit out for the sorry pizza, packing the darn good load. Who should they meet but the devil himself, a prancer down the road? He said, Carn, sarn, you cowboy stumps, you better head hunt your hole. I am the devil from hell's rim rock, come a gathering up your soul. Well, devil be darn, says Sandy Bob, us boys both know we're tight. Before you'll corral any cowboy souls, you darn sure have to fight. He throwed his loop and he throwed her straight, and she spun down good and true. He caught the devil by his pointed horns, and he took his valleys too. Now Buster Jiggs was a real man with his gut line coiled up neat. He punched him a hole, and he flung her down fair, and he caught the devil's hind feet. They stretched him out, and they laid him down, while the sizzling irons grew hot. They trimmed him up with a dehorn saw when they branded him a law. <laughs> well, they tied ten knots in the old boy's tail and they left him there for a joke. With a pillar and cough, they both loped off, left him neck to a blackjack oak. If you ever go to ride in the Siri Peaks and you hear one hell of a wail, it's only the devil as he yells and growls at the knots tied in his tail. Thank you. Here's another one of Gail's works, or whatever you call it. He says he's got a kind of a knack for writing doggerel verse based on a slim basis in truth, is how he describes it. But there's more than that in this one. It's called Real Cowboy Life. And this is the same fellow wrote this. This is a poem. It goes like this. You read a lot of stories about the cowboy's life so free, and I expect that you could tell me what a cowboy's life should be. He wears a fancy outfit, and he shoots the rustlers down. He rescues lovely maidens shoots up every town. And if you think that's the way a cowboy's life should be, but it ain't no better roses, you can take this tip from me. It's early in the springtime, the first job you undertake is to shoe up all your horses till you think your back will break. Now you can ride a rim fire or a center fire if you will. It really doesn't matter. You'll have your troubles still. You can take your dally welters and lose a lot of hide, and if you chance to miss them, you've surely got to ride. You can tie it hard and fast and throw away the slack, and if you yearling hooks the sapling while well, you're bound to slip the pack. And when you cowboy all your life, here's what'll do for you. So bust the ribs and shoulders and knock down hip or two. You butt it into cedars till your hair is nearly gone. And uh, Till your hair is hard to find, and the granites and the mail pies got you all stove up behind. And if you have a youngster and he wants to fall or stalk, the best thing you can do for him is to brain him with a rock. <laughs> or if a rock ain't handy, you can throw him down a well. Don't let him be a cowboy, he's better off than hell. <laughs> Here's a song from South Dakota. Most of my songs are cowboy songs from Arizona and the bed. This one from South Dakota is called My Harding County Home. That's the Northwest 50 
square miles in all directions, county of South Dakota, and right next to Montana and North Dakota. And written by a guy that became a movie cowboy, a movie cowboy there in South Dakota. He got to make one B Western and then they quit making them. <laughs> so he's not real well known. <laughs> was a fellow named Tex Fletcher, who was from New York. So he lived out there during the Depression and started cowboying. So anybody can do if they'll take you on and give you a try. But it's my Harding County home. <coughs> this got a little bit different too. Bride. 
and the sheriff, he waved a message, and he called us all inside. It was just a little message from a town in Illinois saying, on my way to Boston, say goodbye to all the boys. Well, then the plot developed that the scheming little bait was engaged to all the punchers she could locate in the state. <laughs> each had paid her money, each a hundred bucks a school, just to learn that a woman's tricky and a puncher is just a fool. So I ambled home in silence. I'm saying plain to you, I'm all cut up on women, which is me and I'm through. Why, some of them are noble, good and true, I weakly said. But the foreman, the wild horse, Charlie, never spoke in our journey's head. His Reynolds was kind of an interesting character. He was a bronc rider. Everybody up there tried it at least once. And when they had a rodeo on the Rosebud Reservation, he'd get in the bronc riding once a year until he was about 60. And that ain't no way to keep fit. <laughs> if I can find the key, I promised you there was a song I could, a religious song I know that you can sing with. And I sing it in A, it's too high. I sing it in E, it's too low. Let's try it in G and see what happens. I'm sure you'll catch on to the chorus real quick because you did so good on the yodel. <laughs> then you think this might be a little easier than the yodel. <clears throat> and I learned it from a lady down in Stone County, Arkansas, who sung it dead serious to me. And of course, I'm singing it dead serious tonight, and it's called the Warning to the Young. You'll recognize the chorus part that you got to pick up on. Young people who delight in sin, I'll tell you what has lately been. A woman who was young and fair, she died in sin and sad despair. And here's her part.
if I could sing the Wild Bucker. I guess I can. There are two versions of this. I'll sing the one you might can hear sometimes, someplace, and then I'll sing you the one the Wild Buckaroo sing. But I don't want to insult or offend any ladies or children or anybody, so in all the bad words, I'll just hum. <laughs> and, uh, and some of the nice words that rhyme too good with bad words, I'll just hum on them. <laughs> sometimes it's kind of hum. So anyway, I'm doing the best I can to, uh, it's, uh, it's up to yourself how you understand this thing, okay, but I'll do both versions of Wild Buckaroo, it's from the bad, a fellow named Curly Fletcher a long time ago, both of them. In Nevada, they always call a cowboy a buckaroo, they hardly ever use the word cowboy. I've been riding for cattle uh, most of my life.
where we're on real deep philosophy like that. I'll run another one of them poems like The cowboy bed ain't his saddle and a horse blanket over him getting all covered with sweat and horse hair and stuff. He's got a, if he's camped out, he's got a good bed. And there's a bunch of blankets and quilts and a tarp around him. Keep right. And this poem is called Frost on the Cowboy's Tarp. And it's about a guy that cowboy dreams he goes to heaven. And maybe it wasn't exactly the place for him, but anyway, Frost on the Cowboy's Tarp. An old cowboy and his trusty pal was camped one night by an old corral looking for dogies with long slick ears and keeping an eye on the boss's steers. Summer roundup was long since through. There was only some winter brandon to do so he crawls in his suitings and tarps a deep and soon got warm and was fast asleep. He dreamed that he walked the streets of gold and all around him the angels strolled. The trees and the grass was the greenest green, most beautiful range he'd ever seen. And then he noticed that he was the only one with bat wing chaps and big six gun, bat wing chaps all laced with wang and all around him the angels sang. So he asked St. Pete if he could be dressed so that he looked like all the rest, and they gave him a robe and a golden harp, and the frost lay thick on the cowboy's tarp. Well, he played that harp, and he sang a while, and then he thought of something that made him smile. He says, I reckon these wings will do to show wild horses a thing or two. I'll find a bunch and jump them out. I'll pop their tails. I'll hoop and shout. I'll ride one bareback. If that fails, I'll simply <coughs> flap these wings and sail. So he ran wild horses in his dreams, but all he could find was chariot teams that old Elijah had left there. Why to jump on them it seemed hardly fair. So he sat down beneath the tree and placed his crown upon his knee, watching the angels come and go, flying and fluttering to and fro. One came near and began to walk. Coming quite close, she began to talk. Her lips were red and her eyes were blue, and her fair skin was beautiful too, and her long hair was a golden brown. She was dressed in a flimsy silken gown. Now the cowboy was taken with her charms, so he reached to grasp her in his arms. Stop, she cried, or I'll make complaint to the great white throne and the ruling saint. So the cowboy stopped and must confess he could not bestow <coughs> upon caress. He says, why, lady angel, this is all too bad, but this here country makes me sad. A man can't gamble there's to blame much gold. He can pick up more than his clothes will hold. And all this grass is going to seed, and there's nary a critter to eat the feed. Why, Lady Angel, I'll tell you true, this ain't no place for a buckaroo. So she inquired into his former life and found he'd never possessed a wife. But this Lady Angel is so sweet and nice. She said she'd been married twice. <coughs> Both of her husbands had been great men, but if she ever married again, she'd have to choose between these two, a sailor boy or a buckaroo. So she sat down upon his knees and gave his neck a hearty squeeze. Just then she heard an excited call from the old gray saint on the garden wall, flapping his robe and waving his arm till the crowd was gathered in great alarm. What is this, the old saint cried. How did that feller get inside? Look at that face, the desert brown, them old bow legs beneath that gown. Why, that's a cowboy, I know them well. They're not allowed even down in hell. He's only been here half a day, and he's already led an angel astray. We can't keep him here at all, so pitch him over the garden wall. So the saints and the angels gave him a start, and he fell towards earth like a falling dart, and he didn't know just how he hit, because he awoke before he lit. Beautiful dream had come to grief, so he made some biscuits and cooked some beef. He drank some coffee black and strong, and all that day as he rode along, he thought of his dream with a wicked grin and the old gray saint that had butted in. Why, if I had a hold of that old saint chap, I'd pull his whiskers and change his map. Never after, as he rode, rode and toiled, he thought of his dream that the saints had spoiled. But he never repented and never prayed. Just wish to hell that he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sacatecas, Mexico. A cowboy buddy of mine with his kids working together in the both of 17 or something like that. Married a big ranch in Mexico. He wanted me to go down there. <coughs> yeah, 
Yeah, he married the ranch owner. So it was mm -hmm. the main deal. Mm -hmm. Didn't work out for him anyway, but it was a quarter million acres at the south end of the state of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. But I always thought about this Sacatecas March and how it'd be if I was down there instead of Mount New York. <laughs> some words from Shakespeare in it, they tell me. And the first batch of folklorists I met, some of them got kind of mad and said that shouldn't be in there. And then one of them got a little bit smarter and dug around a little bit and found out they used to give away Shakespeare quotations with coupons from Bull Durham smoking. <laughs> <laughs> that might explain some of them. Just one little bit. So they tell me, I didn't know.
society brands me so savage and dark. The Masons would bore me out of their lawn. But here on my chin, I might pass for the goat who bore all the sins in the age of Srimo. And why it's so, I can understand. Each of the patriarchs owned a big brand. Abraham immigrated in search of the rain because of a drought he was seeking a change. My parson remarks from his pulpit alone, fortune favors those who look out for their own, and Cupid is always a friend to the bold. Well, old boy, I guess. 
racer whip. I said that I am busted from sombrero down to heel. He grinned and said, you order see that gall darn <laughs>